What I'm doing today is part two of the October sketch challenge and yeah I know we're in the business end of November now but yeah one thing led to another and it is what it is and this is where we're at. So for Embellish with Flair Heather and I have been challenging each other in October. I picked a sketch and we both did a layout on it and Heather picked a sketch and she's done hers and today I'm doing mine. And this is the one that she's picked and it's a hard one. I can't quite read the name of the person who designed it. It looks like Diastra or something is the last name. I don't know. Ingleboro Diastra. I don't know. I can't read that. Anyway, that's what Heather's chosen. That's what we're going to work uh, with. I had a few ideas. It took me a little while to come up with something. And these are the photos that I used three different kind of slightly vintagey filters and I've gone with this one. Her skin tone looks sort of the most natural but the the rest of the colours look the way I want them to look, nice and rich and it's an improvement on the original. So this is book week at school when that, and that, that's the day they dress up and they have these at my niece's school, these lime green steps which is an odd colour to throw in with Wonder Woman but hey why not. So I've got these as a backup but that's the one that I've cut down. The papers that I thought I'd use and the reason why I wanted a slightly more vintagey filter on it is, I mean it's not very vintagey, but I wanted to use my counterfeit kit from October. I'll link the post description box when I put together the kit and shared it. It had a lot of the sort of no longer with us dearly departed manufacturers like October Afternoon, Basic Grey, all of those ones. So it was a big kit because it was based on a Studio Calico kit with lots of add-ons and when there are add-ons, well obviously I'm going to make up those mm. two. I think it was the lime green that was actually in the kit that made me think about using the kit with this photo because there were quite a few papers that were sort of a slightly not a really iridescent lime green but I thought well you know what they would work and there was plenty of red and yellow not a whole lot of royal blue tiny little bit of navy maybe so I did come back in and and pull some extra blue options all the kits and add-ons and everything I just went and threw them all together how I thought I'd tackle the circles initially I thought I'll just do squares fine that's my interpretation and that's how it's going to be but I thought well that's going to be too easy and I thought a middle of the road option between circles and squares are hexagons and this um, Paige Evans paper from Horizon the rainbow starburst but if you look carefully you can sort of see three distinct sections so each ray is made of three papers and well, they're not hexagons obviously because there's more than six pieces but get the idea that's what I want to replicate now I could use this paper except firstly I don't need all the colors and I don't want it to sort of go around like this I want the wheel to be one distinct color so the colors to go outwards I need something to be a template which I cut on the silhouette um, this looks like a hot mess right now but I promise there's order to it so I pulled it off now I'm not sure which bit you're supposed to use on your layout. You could use either and I know people have used both and that's what I would probably do. I think it's a Paige Evans one. I am going to measure out roughly three or four circles and just sort of mark them. If I start with the biggest and work my way down I just have to cut each one as I go and use each of these wedges as a template for the pattern papers and that's why I've got pretty much all the pattern papers and all the colors so that I can do each one in a different color um, well in the same color but in a different paper in the same color is that making sense I need to figure out a way of doing that get some measurements happening so for the background I wanted not something white white but pulled out a few options and they're all sort of bookish textish sort of options right off the bat even though I love the fact that it's quite plain and the text is sort of in aqua which would go along with our color scheme it's just too cream as October afternoon tends to be even this one is really quite I mean this one's more of a, a textbook like a exercise book layout so it's about the same sort of cream. This cream is much lighter. And while I like that it's a story and that would go along really nicely with book week, it is a bit too bright. 
So my solution is I'm going to just slap on a ton of gesso. It'll still be translucent, even just with plain gesso. The white will lighten it up a bit and um, the text and everything will still come through. So that's what I'm going to do first. And then I'm going to figure out what I'm going to do with those cut files and how to attempt to deal with those. Now I've just got some gesso, brush, nothing fancy. just I like brush strokes this is a good brush because it's big so I cover a lot of ground quite quickly and I can get nice brush strokes it always looks more opaque in the beginning it will lighten up a lot when it dries Now I'm not worried about this being perfect because I'm gonna, the stitching will hold any imperfections. I probably should have done this before, huh? color code just going to grab a pen and color code um, the pairs because they might they might not be pairs I'm sure there's a simpler way of doing it I, th I think as usual I'm over complicating matters Okay, we have all our little triangle pie shaped starburst wedge pieces and a dry background. Well, yeah, it's dry. So I'm going to start with the biggest circle, like I said, and that will be the blue one. And I guess we just see how we go. So I'm just going to pull out all the blue papers, see if I've got enough. If not, Rating the scrap bin, but hopefully I do. Well, a sensible thing would be probably to avoid cutting into brand new big 12 by 12 sheets if at all possible, but then I wouldn't be using the kit. And I've got plenty of paper. I'll probably just use this little bit. Okay. Um, hmm. What I do need is a more or less straight line across here. It doesn't particularly matter what the angle is as long as it's straight. And um, yeah, uh, I have no idea how I'm going to proceed. But anyway. I might just fast forward that so you don't have to watch me painstakingly doing it bit by bit by bit. Okay, finished cutting the wedges for at least the first section and now it's time to put them in order. So this is a good job why I numbered them. Okay, just putting the tiniest little bit and I'm doing it that in the middle so that when I stitch along the intersections it's not going to gum up the needle.
I have stitched okay, um, zigzag stitched along each of the joins messily it's fine there is jumped it skipped it it's all good uh, the middle sections are going to be covered that's not an issue I did have to trim them all down quite brutally because they were just too big what I need to do is I need to stick them down it is going to create a fair bit of bulk and what I thought I'd do at the bottom is I have two cut files of an open book it's one of Paige Evans ones I cut one smaller and one bigger and so what I thought is that the embellishments that are kind of coming up in the sketch for them to sort of look as though they're kind of coming out of the book um, I'm leaning towards the larger book but if I put it like this the opening is sort of here and I kind of want it a little bit like this I don't want to angle it really brutally a little bit's okay so I'm thinking just to cut some of it off the end alternatively I could use the smaller book it's a better fit but I don't think it has quite the same impact as the bigger one in any case what I wanted to do is I have this bunch of um, all different text type papers some are six by six uh, the rest are all from my box of scraps some are cream some are white they're all completely different and to make the pages of the book to back to back each section of the cut file with a little bit of paper and that is going to look better the bigger it is the better it's going to look because otherwise you won't be able to make out what the text is well you don't need to read it but to make out that it is text it's really hot here I can't think do you, you know what I'm talking about don't you that's what I'm going to try and do and then I'll worry about positioning this it might take a while there are different ways to try and back a cut file and the least high tech is sort of to even roughly cut a piece of paper stick it on just where it where it is and then cut around it or sort of trace the inside edge and cut it just a little bit bigger you need to be able to adhere it just to the to the thin part of the cut file the first one's the hardest the rest of them can overlap the one above it a little bit more that is what I will do now and I'm thinking that this paper is going to be the best one maybe for this largest section of um, the biggest page the book is ready I went with red stars for the actual what should be the cover of the book because partly because the smallest of the circles is red and so there'll be the least of that but also because you know stars Wonder Woman and stars are one of the elements that I'm hoping to put up the side along with I'm also hoping to fussy cut a bunch of these books and have them fluttering up the spine so to really play up on the whole book the book week thing because yeah that's an essential part of the story um, I pulled out a bunch of other embellishments to use so I will be obviously adding flair and I have the perfect flair from embellished with flair to add aside from that I need to adhere the, the circles put the photo down and all of that kind of thing but first I think I'm going to fussy cut the books and I'll be back once I've done that because that's really exciting viewing the book is finished and ready to adhere but first I need to put these on I trimmed away the excess paper but I had to hack off quite um, a lot of the actual I guess circumference or diameter depends whether you're measuring this way or this way but I felt that they were just too big for the page considering that I wanted some other elements to put there so the sketch which has become stuck to the mat which is fine yeah we, we still have this sort of stuff to add and the journaling anyway so I think these are going to go down first and then the photo and the book and then I'm going to work on what's going to go up the side journaling spot has not been definitively confirmed but I was thinking it could be fun to maybe go around I'll we'll see because this is rough and bumpy and a bit warped I'm just going to err on the side of caution and use the permanent glue dots so I'm going to be generous with those 
although I probably will stay away from the edges just so I can have the option of tucking little things in between the layers if I want to because I have plenty of stuff that I pulled out and it would be a shame not to use it. I'm still leaning towards having it run off the page on one side just because if I do it like this sorry it would help if you could see if I do it like this then the opening of the book where I want to have all the little things that are coming out of it it sort of looks more like that's exactly what they're doing so yeah now, flush off the page or on pop dots or foam? That is the question. Um, I might actually put it on foam, to be honest, simply because it's going to make it look more like, I don't know, a real book, maybe? I don't know. Then I can figure out where to put this. I did sort of think about tucking it in the pages or having at least the part of it to sort of the photo to look as though it's coming out of the book but I'm not sure uh, that might not be too bad actually I wouldn't mind some of the circles to be obvious on this side but obviously I do need to cover up that center and the good thing is that in the green steps I think the children sit on those things or something I don't know um, isn't anywhere near the green the green layer so that's fine Okay, let's get some foam on that. What I'm going to do is put the adhesive side down and then I can use glue dots on this side because that's the side that's going to need to be um, stronger. What I'm thinking is if I just put it on a slight, slight angle, it will hopefully catch a corner of the photo a little bit better. I think that's going to need just a little bit of foam just there for some extra support. I don't think it would be possible to make this without glue dots. Now, how are we going to put it? thinking that if I do the title over here sort of in several lines it will fill up this space without getting in the way of the other bits. I might actually do that just to be sure that's where I want it. Well as usual I've pulled out far more lettering options than I need. Initially pulled out all the glittery thickets because I mean this is Wonder Woman we're talking about. Uh, speaking of that I kind of thought maybe I wanted to do a bit of a diagonal line of gold mist, misty splatter, except of course I forgot before I put the photo down. That's okay. So in order to mix it up, I did pull out also these stickers from Chanel's Field Trip and they very conveniently come with both Wonder Woman Blue and Red. One thing I did want to do is definitely bring in gold because I think that's clearly, you know, Wonder Woman and gold is fairly synonymous. I don't have a witty or original title. I thought about just saying First Book Week. I could say Lilia's First Book Week because that's this cutie's name. So I could do Book Week in the gold. Probably only want to use one of these. I do apologise. What happens is if I'm not paying attention, after 30 minutes the camera stops recording, which is fantastic. Anyway, you didn't miss anything. I'm still messing about with these alphabet things, the title. Yeah, I think I've decided which alphas to use. What I'm just trying to avoid is to have all the words starting in the same spot 
I'm just going to just stitch a couple of messy lines through each row, maybe not that one. I'll put a tiny a micro glue dot on. Total stitch down and now I'm going to use a 05 precision pen and hope that it writes okay on the gesso. That's the thickest one I have. I did have some eights I think but I don't anymore so I'm gonna have to hope for the best. I'm hoping that the journaling will fit. If I start maybe here I don't want to start too far down because I think I'm going to go a bit nuts with the embellishment. I mean, don't always, but anyway. I will start, say, maybe, where did I say? Here. I'll do that before I forget. All right. Not ideal. The last word was a bit... Anyway, I think it's still legible, just. What I did was, remember that sheet of royal blue paper with the books that I had fussy cut well here it is I kind of separated them by color so I'm just gonna mess about with those there's also lots of different stars you can't have Wonder Woman without stars and these are only more or less the right colors so there's plenty of these cute little hand-drawn shaped stars and then there are the matching enamel shapes with lightning bolts I might add because I'm thinking that um, Wonder Woman needs lightning bolts. I also have in two sizes, where are the other ones? Make that three. These random Wonder Woman stickers because when you like Wonder Woman as much as I do, you have all the Wonder Woman things. I think that this one's meant for planners, but there's a lot of really small words and shapes and things like that that will work. And they've used the gold, so that's one reason why I wanted to. I've got lots more stars. There's the sticker book, Chamel sticker book, which has all words like Wonder and Super and more stars and more stars and more words and stickers like sparkle, hello, super. I thought I could use maybe the yellow star from this, maybe. I pulled out a bunch of these random die cut shapes that maybe sort of either school, a school vibe or, ooh, this pile of books looks pretty good. That first pile didn't quite have the right colors, but I'm gonna throw those in. Hello, my name is. That would be a good one to put that she went as Wonder Woman. A lot of these, I'm afraid, are just going to be way too big. I'm thinking maybe a mixture of open and closed books, but the open ones, are, mm, I don't know, probably going to be a little bit better, I was thinking, because then I can put stuff on the pages. I'm going to pull these off too, so I need to figure out where to put these largest elements. I may actually, rather than scattering the badges up the side with everything else, sort of put them around the sort of more important parts of the, sort of to mark the journaling, the photo and the title. Something like that. Anyway, the next thing is just to figure out how I want these books. And I don't want to forget this stack of books. Maybe that can sort of go somehow like this. And the actual, I mean, this has a strip at the top and the bottom, so we can do a token little cluster up there, something like that. I'm kind of liking that green one better. Then I can put it under the books and still have plenty of room to write. But then I might, I don't know. I really don't know. I'm just not going to think about it for now. Yeah, actually that's pretty good. And then this can go somewhere. And I probably will put the books on pop dots just to put a bit of a shadow underneath them. And having done that, I'll be able to get a better idea of where. Because I don't want to overload the books, says the girl who likes more. Then I'm thinking that the flare badges should, in theory, I'll figure it out. Okay. We need to come back with the glue dots on this. Ah. 
Okay, you might notice that I have pulled up the little name tag and the bits that I had over here because the more I thought about it, the more I thought that what I might want to do is have these books that I had going from here up to there to have them going from biggest to smallest and to have them going right around here in which case that was going to get in the way. So if I move it there, I actually think it might not be the worst balance because you'll have a little bit of something there to balance out this book here. But then again, there's stuff all the way across the bottom and then there's stuff here and stuff. That I, don't, I don't think it's going to make much difference one way or the other. But I'm going to try it. I've still got those bits here. I just stuck them onto this plastic packaging so I can just keep the sticky and move them again. Um, otherwise I'll just use undo and get them up so I need to get put the books back not exactly how they were but near enough I have extra in case I need them if I just kind of start to put the smaller ones towards the top middle sized ones in the middle that's kind of middle sized that's middle sized these are the big honking great massive ones but I do still want to have a mix of open and closed books, so, so it's not going to be exact. Looks a bit messy, but get inky and hope for best. The good thing is it's left little gaps to put other stuff, little sprinkly bits in between there. Now before I do that I want to put um, this bit at the top. Can we get it off? We can because, let's see, don't say that blue dots don't stick because they do. Um, I'm just going to, the thing is I was going to put the badge on this side uh, and the other one was going to go here somewhere wasn't it so I think I want to put it on that side make it kind of a triangle like where did those books go oh, they're right in front of me of course they are of course they are so I don't really want to chop them off the page but I do think they do they look better I wanted to put them on foam dots didn't I I'll put this one down there, over here. I kind of like it overlapping everything. Have a look and see what it looks like with the books going off the page. But I guess it would be sort of like this going off the page. All right, well, I'll ink it and then. I think I wanted to put it up on foam, I think. Not a hundred percent certain. Well, I'm going to put this off the page anyway. And then I could put that bit right there. Hmm. Yeah, I can live with that. Let's do that before I change my mind. I might as well trim everything back, re-ink the trimmed edges and then start the little embellishy bits like the Wonder Woman words. Fine. I'm going to need teeny tiny micro stickers. Okay, I've got some older ones from My Mind's Eye and Jenny Bolin. Sorry about that. I keep needing to, I really should be reminding myself to check when the camera switches itself off. So we're just sticking stars still. 
nothing has happened of any great significance. Just one more, it will look like it's a bit of a, yeah, I'll just sit it like that and then have a look at the, for the next thing. Yeah, I think I'll use these. Actually, there's these things too, the little comic book things. Oh, okay. Well, this is going to be interesting. These are separate and they're teeny, teeny, tiny. I must say those gold ones are really subtle. I think we need more red. If I do, I'm just going to use them all. I put these out in the hopes that I would use them. These little puffies. I could sneak these in around here just for a little bit of texture. Let's see how they go. Oh, the date, the date, the date, the 6th of September. I'm going to have to use one of these. It doesn't have it, has it in the American format, but that's okay. Where to put the date? Maybe just here. I think that's flat enough that might actually get a legible stamping. Just better double check. So that's Yep, that's the correct Get zero 06, yep. Alright, now I don't mind if we stamp multiple times because that's the whole library card thing. There we go. Journaling, title, all parts of them. Oh, well, that's coming up. That's not good. Clear badges, hearts, and all the other bits. Date. Yep, okay. Thank you very much for watching. I will have more in, you know, close ups and pictures and everything of this on the Embellish with Flare blog and on my blog. And I hope you enjoyed it, even though I had the camera cutting out several times. I will investigate and see if there's anything I can do to stop that from happening. But it's an actual thing, apparently. Um, yeah, like I said, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you soon. Bye!